Like, oh, well, you know, I'm a mom. And I was like, well, I would gladly fuck your husband. All right, everybody's sending me this LSF clip of Miz talking about me. Let's start with this. Let's see what Miz had to say. No one better on stage, in my opinion, with the improv than seeing Will Neff do what he did. That man didn't even know he was coming on stage before, until 30 minutes before. And that joke he made with XQC was amazing. I was like, that was so well done that it was amazing to see Will it, it be creative like that. With the, the coming thing that he made XQC say. Here's here's the clip he was referencing, by the way. Just, just so you guys have the context. XQC. No. <laughs> Show me premature no. ejaculation, but only do it with your face. Go. Um... Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know, I did um, I did a show called Name Your Price this weekend at TwitchCon. And Name Your Price was amazing. Uh, you guys showed up in force. I was absolutely blown away by how many people came out and had such a good time. But as I was coming off the stage for Name Your Price, which we'll, we'll, we'll recap that later, the OTK production crew came up to me and they were like, we had Seer have to bail on the show because he's going to see Chris Angel. <laughs> and apparently Peach booked this show like six months ago. It's been sold out like a year in advance and he forgot he's going to Mind Freak. Will you be our acting teacher for school? And I was like, yeah, how long do I have? And they're like, you need to be back here in 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, shit. So I got off stage from Name Your Price, went and like jammed some tacos in my mouth and immediately did schooled. But they had done a rehearsal and like they had like a character that they wanted to do. You know, all the teachers were kind of like characters. So they're like, you're going to go last and you're going to be the acting teacher. Great. When they got to me, they were bottom of the show and they were like, hey, uh, we are way over time. So you need to be so fast. Your little bit that you do, whatever it is, you got to do it in like 30 seconds. <laughs> and I was like, oh God. So I just made up like super fast acting exercises. Okay. And then the other thing that I don't know if you guys noticed, which is really funny, is they handed me the cue cards for what the charades were right before I went on. And they're like, you hand this to one of them. And I was like, great. And I was like, how am I going to know if they get it right or not? Do you have another card? And they're like, no. <laughs> so we were like scrambling, writing down what everything was. The other thing that was really funny that like they didn't capture, which I was really sad about is when they were playing dodgeball in that first round, they used safe balls because they didn't want to hurt anybody. But the boxes that they had to hit over with the dodgeballs they were actually like super heavy so like nothing was getting knocked over here i'll show you they were playing dodgeball and nothing was getting knocked over and this game went on and on and everybody was exhausted so at at one point at the end i ran out and i cross bodied through the block. I smashed through the blocks and they didn't get any of it on camera. I literally sprinted out and smashed through. Let's see this. There I go. Are you okay? He's he's already on crutches. <laughs> so what you didn't see is I went full cross body send through these boxes and I'm covered in bruises. Which is why the audience is going fucking insane. I don't know how the cameraman botched that so bad. And Miz came up to me afterward and he was like, dude, that bit was so funny. The crowd loved it. And I was like, Miz, none of that got on camera. No one saw it. And he was like, no, someone has it. Yes. This is what happened. Dude, dude. I went full, fu 
fucking ass out. I knew that I had gone ass out, but I was like, that is like five feet in the air, full horizontal crossbody. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I'm so glad Canute had a clip of this. <laughs> Look at my ass. <laughs> dude, me, me end zone throwing the ball in the air is so goddamn funny, too. <laughs> S-Man chases me off. God, I cannot believe the cameraman missed that, dude. But yeah, man, listen, dude, I, here's what I'll say. Like, if you plan on streaming or want to stream or it's a collaborative medium, this shit happens. And so it was my pleasure to, to help OTK do that show. And I'm just glad I could do a good job for him. That's it. You know, I, I love entertaining people and I had a great time. And yeah, I... I Thanks for letting them let me come on. Just wanted to say it was so awesome to get to meet you again. Seeing you wear the I Hot Hot Dad's shirt I got you made me so incomprehensibly happy. Thank you so much for getting me the I Heart Hot Hot Dad shirt. Yeah, that chatter got me a shirt that said I Heart Hot Dad's and I wore it around the third day of, uh, <laughs> of TwitchCon and everybody was like, yes. Somebody came with their mom. And yeah. she like didn't know see you. who we were, but uh, someone said, "Yeah, you know, we'll we'll fuck dads to this mom," and she was like, "Oh well, you know, I'm a mom," and I was like, "Well, I would gladly fuck your husband." And she, I I guess she didn't know she had like never seen me before and didn't really know what to expect, but like she just started busting out laughing, and her kid found me later in uh, TwitchCon and was like, dude, you made my mom laugh so much. The highlight of her, of her TwitchCon was you saying that you would fuck our dad. <laughs> Which I thought was goddamn hilarious. But yeah, guys, I had an absolute blast at TwitchCon. I didn't expect to have so much fun. And I just had a wonderful, wonderful time. I left it all on the table, though. I, I feel so exhausted. Um, yo, I went to bed last night at like one o'clock and I woke up this morning at like one thirty with like crusties gluing my eyes shut with Farley punching me in the head with his paw. Did you go to XQC's place in Vegas? No, I was working so much. I really didn't do too much. I did a lot of like dinners was like the most I went out. I would go and have oh, dinner yeah, with wow. people. Will Speedy's hot sauce from Emily's stream. Oh shit, what is this? God, we gotta watch all these clips. I didn't even know I was in so many clips from TwitchCon. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, on the tour? Because you were driving and you've learned. And that's why she didn't respond. You Hi, are so right. Girl, have some of my sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you piece of shit. Thank you, I will gladly take your sauce. Speedy hot sauce. <laughs> for flying Did I fucking those boxes? Yep. Thank you. I need this. I need this voice line. You, I will gladly take your sauce. <laughs> oh, wow, that's for a cool. Man, Will, I wish you would have been on NMP's racing stream. It was good content. Oh, uh, dude. I, so I was supposed to be there, and the reason I wasn't there See? was I had to do the tech rehearsal for Name Your Price, uh, which ultimately. Uh, in retrospect, they absolutely did not need me for, but, uh, you know, uh, when you're working with a big production group, they always like to be overprepared. So, uh, I w I was there to, to not give them a headache and I was glad I was there. Cause you know, you don't want them to ever worry, but they absolutely did not need me there. Oh yeah. Wow. What happened to the lube barrel? I actually don't know that when they brought out the big barrel of lube, my dream was to give it to like an 18 year old kid in the audience and I just had images of them dragging around this like 700 pound barrel of lube for the rest of the con. Like the, the visual of that was so goddamn funny to me. But they were, they were like, you, you, you are not allowed to give away this barrel of lube. <laughs> I forbid you. You see yourself in this fire pick? Yeah, dude. I saw this pick. This pick goes crazy. With the TwitchCon cowboy hat on. And all my fucking... Taylor Swift friendship bracelets. 
Uh, dude, that Elvis impersonator just kept going, bro. Oh my God, that was so brutal. I wanted to talk about it more on the pod, but uh, Austin was like, I don't know, he was nervous that the Elvis impersonator was going to watch our podcast and get offended. Uh, I'll just say it loud and clear. He was bad. Um, I thought his Elvis character was pretty weak. Not because maybe he's a bad Elvis impersonator, but maybe that's because it was the biggest stage he's ever performed in front of. And granted, I get that. Some of the first few times I did improv in front of like a, a live audience or like a large audience, the adrenaline would get in me and I would just be like, oh, fuck. Um, and I would, I would kind of lose the character, but he like lost the character so badly. He didn't, he didn't even sound like Elvis. And he was try, like trying to say Elvis stuff, like n song titles and stuff to like stay in the character. That segment was supposed to be five minutes long and it went for like 20 minutes. And you guys don't know this, but when you're on stage, you have what's called an IFB. It's like a secret security mic in your ear. And so you hear production talking. Production in my ear was like, hey, um, Elvis is going a little bit long. If we could move this along, that'd be great. Like 10 minutes in, they're like, hey, guys, we are way over on the Elvis bit. Uh, if we can just move this along, that'd be great. 15 minutes, they were like, guys, we are so far over. We're going to have to cut a part of the show out. You need to cut him off. But like, what they don't understand is it was a fucking wedding ceremony. So what the fuck are we going to do? Austin felt bad because it was a wedding ceremony. And Austin is like nicer than I am on stage. A lot of people don't get that. But like he is really tight with production. I'm a little tighter with talent, right? I will correct talent. Austin will correct production. The guy's a talent. And I tried to correct him twice. I was like, hey, Elvis, we got to get these people married. Uh, and he just wasn't getting the note, which is so rough uh, when you're like trying your best to save a performer from themselves. He just wasn't picking it up because I, I cut him off like twice. I had to interrupt someone during a fucking wedding ceremony. I had to go full blown comedy Russell <laughs> and object to a wedding to try and get this performer to fucking speed up his cadence, man. It was like, come, dude. He was like losing the jokes too and nothing was landing because no one in our audience listens to Elvis. So like all the name drops of like the Heartbreak Hotel and shit just were like, Phew. he should have just fucking immediately been like, do you take this man to be your wife? Do you take this woman to be your wife? You are now married. Done. And everybody would have gone crazy, but he sucked the fucking life out of the room. He just went on and on and on, running up. Oh, here's my hips. Look at this. I'm doing carnival character. The couple was incredible, though. God, the couple was so cute. They were so nice. We had them backstage. I, I, they were so awesome and so excited. And I'm so glad that they had a fun time. That's, that's the main thing. That couple was incredible. And I think they had a good time. And, you know, what a, what a fucking ride to get married in front of a, a crowd, just absolutely losing it. So that's what made me happy. I'm just giving you guys the tea that, like, in my ear, production was going fucking crazy. And we basically had to cut large parts of the show out because the Elvis went so far over short of me grabbing a fucking cane and pulling him off stage. Uh, he was just going to go long, but the show was still incredible. I thought, I thought name your price. The entire show was great. Honestly, whoever hit the Eagle screech when they were got the emerge announcement, almost saved it for me. That was so good. I, I don't mean to take credit for this, but yeah, that was, that was me. I went backstage and we were working on the sound effects and I told them that my sound guy in Chicago, when I used to do groundlings would work in a random sound effect every night and it would always crush. I don't know why, but just having like an unplanned sound effect that surprised everybody was always just gas. And so that was something I learned when I was working in Chicago. And so when we were talking to the sound guy, I was like, do you have any like random sound effects? 
uh, I you, I was like, the eagle screech is always really funny. And he pulled up an eagle screech, and their eagle screech that they had on their board was so funny that I was like, oh my god, let's just work that into like the haunted board, or or like just have a call for that. And I guarantee you, the crowd's gonna go crazy. We pulled it the first time when we were doing the haunted board, and obviously the reaction from the crowd was huge. So we, you know, he just went crazy with it, and it was so funny to hear it worked in throughout the show but yeah um that's just like one of those uh old wily vet tricks where when you've been doing this for a while there are certain things that just play great on stage and and i knew a random sound effect would just crush the day after the performances the day that i just walked the floor when i woke up i did not have a voice i couldn't make sound so i just started chugging gatorade and stuff like that until i had enough to like whisper Andre and my drive home was insane, dude. We started at 1 a.m. driving home. I listened to Dune on tape the entire time. I almost finished a full book of Dune. I thought Nandre would be down for the memes. Nandre passed out in like the first 20 minutes and slept the entire drive. <laughs> Nandre got a beautiful sleep. As I grinded my way back to LA, but it was just nice to have someone in the car with me. I ate a roller dog and drank a nitro brew and I was fucking dialed in. That's a construction worker lunch. Yeah, dude. Nandre looked at me like I, like I had pulled my balls out in front of a fucking nunnery when I ordered a nitro brew and a roller dog at 1am. Did you talk about the elevator? No, I'll talk more about the elevator. So I almost got killed in an elevator in Las Vegas which is a wild thing to say, but I was going up a elevator in Las Vegas uh, with Hassan Piker and we heard a giant kachunk in the Conrad Hotel. <laughs> and we kind of looked around and we were like, what the fuck was that? It was the elevator's cable, I think, doing something very strange. On the way down uh, later, I was in the elevator with Marsh and a bunch of uh, girls that were staying in the suite with Marsh and his lady friend. And we heard the same noise, but this time the elevator fell like 10 floors. And we registered that because Jarvis looked at like what number it said and it just went like that. I was like, oh my God. It was a very, it was like a very strange experience to like uh, think like, oh my God, I'm gonna die in a fucking elevator. It got stuck there and I was pressing the emergency button and nothing was happening. That was the wildest part is I was pressing and holding this emergency button I've been to try and get some help before. It's so and nothing happened and it was wild. And then after like five minutes of pressing this emergency call button, the elevator finally started slowly going down. And then uh, we got off the elevator and towed the hotel and the, the hotel has literally done nothing to amend the situation they didn't like comp our stay they didn't do anything which is fucking wild um so we've been white hatting karen uh with austin show we're having him call the hotel and try and get something done we will see what happens with austin show trying to get us stuff hopefully they comp something but it was a wild experience bro i was i was definitely like kind of fucking cranked up glad you're safe but your elevator would have been a metal death might have been to oh yeah dude world what truly it would have been a great death do you now understand cutie's fear of airplanes no because i'm a nihilist and i felt very little even after i died i rode the same elevators oh, cool the word. very next day glad you're safe no I, I i was being honest the thing i was thinking of in that elevator was damn good death TwitchCon is twitch is gonna profit so much off of my passing Dude, can you imagine the fucking highlight reel that they would have put on? You know what I mean? I would have at least trended on Twitter for like 10 minutes. It would have been it would have been a big moment, man. Who do you think would have cried the hardest? Seer. Seer is a sensitive boy. Seer would have been crushed. I mean, I would have literally been crushed by the elevator killing me, but he would have been crushed <laughs> by my passing.